The manhunt for a Minnesota grandmother wanted for killing her husband and another woman in Florida is finally over. Lois Reese now in police custody at a jailhouse in a resort town off the southern coast of Texas. An Adobo reports. Federal officials captured 56 year old Lois Reese late Thursday, ending a week's long manhunt. Authorities say an eyewitness spotted a woman matching the description of the Minnesota grandmother at a restaurant on South Padre Island. She was arrested by two deputy U.S. Marshals shortly thereafter without incident. Although she may look like anyone's mother or grandmother, she's an absolute cold-blooded murderer. Surveillance video released earlier this week allegedly shows Reese driving and walking inside a hotel in Ocala, Florida, more than 200 miles from Fort Myers. That's where police believe she shot and killed 59-year-old Pamela Hutchinson, who she met at a bar, then stole her white Acura, credit cards, and identity. Authorities suspect Reese targeted Hutchinson because they looked alike. The victim's cousin spoke to CBS affiliate Wink by phone. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get upset, but this is, this is a relief. This is the closure we need. Reese is also suspected of murdering her husband in Minnesota last month. David Reese was found shot to death in the couple's home. Reese, who police say has a gambling problem, stopped at different casinos before driving to Fort Myers earlier this month and meeting Hutchinson. She now faces multiple charges, including murder and criminal use of personal identification. In Adoba, CBS News. Police say they believe Reese killed both victims with the same gun. Prince fans gather this weekend for another celebration of his life and music. It's been two years since his death, and prosecutors have decided not to file any criminal charges. For two years, the investigation has centered around two people, Dr. Michael Schulenberg and Prince's bodyguard, Kirk Johnson, both seen here with Prince the night before he died. Dr. Schulenberg admitted in a statement to a detective that on April 14th, 2016, he prescribed an opioid for Prince, but put it in Kirk Johnson's name for Prince's privacy. But that prescription, which was for Percocet, did not kill the superstar. The bottom line is that we simply do not have sufficient evidence to charge anyone with a crime related to Prince's death. In all likelihood, Prince had no idea he was taking a counterfeit pill that could kill him. The investigation at Paisley Park turned up a large number of pill bottles containing various pain meds. Some had the imprint Watson 853 on them and turned out to be counterfeit Vicodin laced with the deadly opioid fentanyl. Investigators think he overdosed on the same batch the week before he died while on a plane home from a concert in Atlanta. Authorities never found out where he got those drugs. The investigative files released after yesterday's announcement contain hundreds of elements. WCCO's Jennifer Mayerly spent hours poring over that file. Has a look inside Paisley Park. Surveillance cameras offer a snapshot into the last hours of Prince's life. Here, the 57-year-old walks into Dr. Michael Schulenberg's office with longtime confidant Kirk Johnson. The two spent more than an hour inside before leaving around 6.30 on April 20, 2016. A short time later, a Walgreens camera captures Johnson at a pharmacy counter. On this day, Schulenberg prescribed medicine in Prince's name to help the singer with opioid withdrawal symptoms. Investigators say Schulenberg had written prescriptions for Prince in Johnson's name, although they are not the medications that killed him. Text messages between the two reveal both showed concern and tried to help the musical genius with his addiction. The next morning, authorities responded to a 911 call at Paisley Park. That's where Prince was unresponsive in an elevator, found by staff, including Johnson. WCCO is choosing not to show images and video release of the superstar outside the elevator in what appears to be the same clothes as the night before. Pictures show the kind of white pill stamped Watson 853 that Prince overdosed on. Investigators say the counterfeit Vicodin located in an Aleve bottle was laced with the highly potent opioid fentanyl, one pill found in his bedsheet. Inside Paisley Park, crime scene photographers captured much of what Prince kept private, his music vault with a rehearsal track of Raspberry Beret and works in progress. Also in his home, pictures of his recording studio, instruments, costumes worn in concert, and his car collection. Jennifer Merrily, 
WCCO 4 News. What we did not find in that file was a so-called smoking gun. Investigators followed leads trying to figure out who obtained or supplied the pills that turned out to be counterfeit and laced with an opioid that killed Prince. And while the case file is thorough, investigators ultimately could not bring charges in the music icon's death without that piece. You can take a look at the evidence uh, on your own by going to WCCO.com. Prince's family members want this decision to be a reminder that the music icon is not the only one who suffered. Let's try to find out exactly so what happened to Prince so that we don't have to have another tragedy like this, not only to somebody like him, but like law enforcement were saying, this can happen to anybody that might have an injury. Charles Smith said not charging anyone is disappointing, but he commended law enforcement for a thorough two-year investigation. After the announcement, Prince's estate released the audio and video of his original studio version of Nothing Compares to You. Prince made the recordings at Flying Cloud Drive Warehouse in Eden Prairie in 1984. This song would later be a hit by Shanae O'Connor. Stay with WCCO for continuing coverage as we learn more about the investigation into Prince's death.